ourselves. Let us hear from John, the 10th chapter, beginning with the first verse. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief come only to steal and to kill and to destroy, but I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Let us pray. Dear God of grace, we thank you for your word, which comes to us through the liturgy of the church and through the hymns of the church and through the words of scripture. And often we pray even through the preached word, when we are open in our spirits. We pray that we will be open now, not only that I might speak your word, but that we might receive it through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Traveling through the Holy Land, I'm here to tell you, I understand why my predecessor, Mike Alexander has been there over 30 times because when you walk the roads that Jesus walked, the Bible stories turn from black and white words on a page to a motion picture in living color. The stories just seem to come alive and you feel God's presence very near and dear. I look forward to a time when those who went on this journey with me and I can share with you photographs and stories of the ways that we were touched deeply by God's presence. But I want you to know something. The living presence of Christ is no more real and alive and active in the Holy Land than the living a presence of Christ is right here, right now, in our midst, each and every day. And part of what I would like to do in this sermon series that we are in, that we've titled, Who is Jesus?, is to help us understand that the living, active presence of Christ is real, and is right with us every step, every day of our lives. Jesus made several declarations about himself that are recorded in the Gospel of John. They're known as the I Am statements, and there are seven of them. Seven times that Jesus makes a comparison of himself to something in common everyday life that the people around him could understand. Now, we all know that metaphors are imperfect. They break down at at some point. So when Jesus says, I am the vine, he doesn't mean that he's prickly with bark on the outside and has green stringy hair like leaves, right? Right? We understand that, that they're not to be taken literally. 
when I asked other staff people and clergy among us to help with this sermon series, I offered to them that they could select which one of the I am statements spoke to them the most that they wanted to preach on. Somehow, no one chose I am the gate. <laughs> so I drew the short straw. I am the gate. It is the one that causes me the most questions. What does it mean? I mean, think about it. When you think of Jesus as the good shepherd, as Susan talked with the children about today, artists throughout the centuries have had a field day with painting beautiful pictures of Jesus holding a cute, cuddly lamb in his arms or either over his shoulders. It's so easy to picture Jesus as a good shepherd, compassionate and strong, taking care of us. But how do you picture Jesus as a wooden or a stone door? How welcoming is that? How comforting is that? I mean, the only thing that doors are good for is for going out or coming in. And maybe... That's the key right there. You see, sheep were always going out of their pens or coming back into their pens. They would go into that enclosure that Susan told the children about, an enclosure that did not have a door on it, but just had an opening, a portal as an opening one portal that they went in and out, just one way in and out. And the shepherd would lie down in front of that opening at night so that no one else could come in and steal the sheep and no predators, no animals could come in and harm the sheep. They'd have to go through the shepherd first before they could get to the sheep. And no sheep could wander out and get lost and then the shepherd would stand up and allow the sheep to come out and guide them and protect them and watch over them during the day and then lead them back in, going out and coming in, going out and coming in. And you know, the Bible says that we are like sheep, and we are. We go out for refreshment, excitement, adventure, nurture, and we come back in to the comfortable, to relax, and to rest. We do that all of our lives. In the Psalms, we are told that God watches over our going out and our coming in. We spend our lives going out and coming in. Let me just ask you a question just to prove the point that we're always going out and coming in. We go out. How many of y'all have a Starbucks or a restaurant that you go out to so often that the servers know what you're going to order the minute they see your face? Oh, everybody's not being honest, I don't think. Mm-hmm, yeah. How many of y'all are planning a vacation or a getaway? You're already talking about where you're going to go for adventure or excitement. How many of y'all are already working on that? Oh, a lot more of you. Yeah, yeah. We're always thinking about going out, going out and doing something new, experiencing something new. How many of y'all are looking at buying a new house or a new car or changing jobs? Just a few of you the new and the excitement we go out for. All right, let's look at it the other direction, the coming in to the comfortable, the known, the place where we can rest and feel relaxed and not have to worry about stuff. How many of y'all are sitting in basically the same pew that you sit in every single Sunday you walk into this sanctuary? Yeah. Um, how many of y'all are sitting beside someone you always sit beside, but they didn't raise their hand? <laughs> yeah, we're going to work on that honesty thing a little bit here. Yeah. 
going out and coming in. God watches over this process of going out and coming in. And so maybe that's a key to this thing about Jesus being the door, the one who protects us as we go out and as we come in, who watches over us in the going out and in the coming in. You know, it helps me a little bit always in Scripture when I have a struggle trying to understand what is being said to look at the context. And so if we look back at chapter 9 in the Gospel of John, we see that Jesus has just healed a man who was born blind, a man who'd been sitting by the city gates begging because he had no other means to support himself. And Jesus notices the man. Jesus sees the man and pays attention to him. And Jesus takes some mud and some spit and he heals the man so that the man is able to see. Now that sounds like a wonderful thing to rejoice over. But the religious leaders inside the synagogue don't like that Jesus has done this because he did it on the Sabbath. And so they go to the man and they say, how is it that you were born blind but now you see? How did this happen? And he tells them what Jesus did, but that's not really what they want to hear. They want this man to condemn Jesus because they had this debate going on. If Jesus really is the Son of God, why is Jesus healing on the Sabbath when the Sabbath is made for rest? But then other people are saying, well, if you heal the man, then he must be from God. And so they argue with one another. And when the man is asked, what do you think of Jesus? Is he of God or not? The man tells what he knows. I once was blind, but now I see this man is a prophet of God. And so the Pharisees tell that man he's not worthy to be part of the synagogue community. He's not worthy to be part of the community of faith. They take the authority of closing the door of the synagogue to this man because his beliefs are not their beliefs. And right after this is when we have Jesus saying, I am the gate. See, Jesus is responding to that debate. Jesus is responding to what has just happened to this man, that the doors of God's community have been closed to this man by the Pharisees who took upon themselves what they felt was their right to say, who is in and who is out? Jesus says, no, I'm the only one. I'm the one who is the door, who is the gate, and I am open to all who come to me. I am open to all who come to me. Jesus is calling himself the door is good news for everyone. He is saying, I am the access to God's love, the gift of forgiveness, and the abundant life that everyone seeks. And my door is always open to everyone who comes to me. I know the names of all God's children, and I care about them deeply. And I want them to come in and be nurtured and refreshed and protected when they need that. And I want to lead them out into the adventurous, wonderful, exciting, and abundant life that God has prepared for them. Jesus says, the thief comes only to steal and to kill and destroy, but I came that they might have abundant life. Jesus wants us to see that those who take upon themselves the authority to claim who's in and who's out are roadblocks to God's love and God's grace 
but Jesus himself is an open door to God's love and God's grace and God's abundant life. Jesus not only swings the door open for people who say the right words, he swings the door open for everyone. The door marked Jesus is an invitation to a life of meaning and significance, security and fulfillment. Jesus, as the door, as the gate, is closely tied to what it means for Jesus to be the Good Shepherd. Christine Taylor, our Director of Volunteer and Congregational Engagement, is going to be preaching for us next week on Jesus as the Good Shepherd. But I believe that Jesus being the gate, the gate of the sheepfold, helps us to understand a depth and a richness to what it means for Jesus to be our good shepherd. Because as he serves as that door, just as the shepherd of the sheep protected the sheep from the predators who were out there around, Jesus offers us protection. You remember the Old Testament psalm that we used as our affirmation of faith today, the 23rd Psalm? There's that beautiful line that says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Whenever we go through difficult times, our good shepherd is with us to guard us and to protect us. Years ago, I was preaching a sermon on Psalm 23, and in my research, I realized there's only one letter difference between the word though and through, right? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, the one letter is R. And in American Sign Language, anybody know American Sign Language? The letter R is crossed fingers. Anne knows it. Crossed fingers. And in the early Christian church, when Christians were going through difficult times, they would cross their fingers as a reminder to themselves that even though they were going through a difficult time, Jesus was with them, would help them get through that difficult time. Somewhere along the way, crossed fingers started to be a symbol of good luck, right? Now, I don't really know how the transition from Christians reminding themselves that Jesus is with them became a secular symbol of good luck. But here's my theory. People around the Christians noticed the Christians going through difficult times, and they saw them crossing their fingers as they went through that difficult time. And they saw them make it through that difficult time with peace. And they started to think, hey, there might be something to that crossing your finger thing. And so they started doing that, not really understanding that what the Christians were doing is reminding themselves to hold on to their good shepherd, to remember that Jesus was the door, protecting them from all that would assail against them. There's a wonderful old story that is told about Ira Sankey. Ira Sankey was a song leader for the great evangelist D.L. Moody back in the 1800s. And in 1875, on Christmas Eve, Ira was on a steamboat on the Delaware River. Other passengers recognized him as this great song leader, and they encouraged him to sing for them. And so he decided that he would sing one of his beloved hymns. 
Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. And when he came to that verse, we are thine, do thou befriend us, thou our guardian of our way. There was a man who was listening to him and who was struck with a memory, a memory of when he had served in the Civil War. When the song was over, he walked up to Ira Sankey and he said, pardon me, but I think I recognize your voice. By any chance, did you serve in the Union Army? And Ira Sankey said, well, yes, actually I did. And the man said, well, on a moonlit night in 1862, do you think you might have happened to be the watchman standing sentry that night, somewhere around such and such area? And Ira Sankey said, well, yeah, I was in that area and I did serve as watchman on many a night. So it's very possible that I was serving on a moonlit night in 1862. And the man said, well, I thought that was you. You see, I served in the Confederate Army. And one night I snuck up on you. And I lifted up my rifle and I had you right in my sights. But just as I was about to pull the trigger, you looked up at the moon. And you started singing that same hymn you just sang, Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. And you got to that verse, we are thine, do thou befriend us, be the guardian of our way. And I can't explain what happened, but my arms just went limp and my rifle went down and I couldn't shoot you. Something happened that night. My friends, Ira Sankey said he realized that the shepherd of his soul was watching out for him that night. He had no idea there was a predator about to attack him and hurt him. He just had his eyes on his good shepherd, thinking about how Jesus is that protector of his life. Now, I wish that stories like that happened all the time, that every time every one of us goes through a difficult time, that a miracle like that would happen. But I know that doesn't always happen. Some of us endure a lot of hardships in this world. Some of us go through a lot of difficult times. So what do we do when we go through those difficult times and we are not spared of the pain and the hurt and the difficulty. I think it's during those times that we have to remember that the most powerful part of this story is that, yea, though we walk through those difficult times, we can still have peace. We can have peace and assurance that we will make it through those difficult times. Years ago, in the Middle Ages, when craftsmen, carpenters, were making doors, they intentionally made the doors with two small panels at the top and two large panels at the bottom so that there was a raised cross in the door. Have you ever noticed that about the doors in your house or buildings you've gone into? It's a reminder to us that Jesus is the door, offering protection to our going out and our coming in. May you have that assurance both now and forever. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.